jumping on a few minutes early. Hey man, sweet dude. I guess we're live. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. We got we already got 45 people hanging out. Oh, sorry. Right. Welcome gonna... everybody. Quiet my screen. Dean, how you doing, man? Welcome for joining. Dean. Sweet. That's awesome. Yeah. I guess we haven't officially started yet. Just I figured we'd start a couple minutes early, you know. I don't know. This is the, I like uh, I like to show, I'd like to try to show up early. In the military it was like if you're not 15 minutes early you're late, you know, that was always kind of the the same. Oh, so. That's so your whole life. I mean, think about how many meetings and stuff you have every day if you were 15 minutes early to everything. Yeah, I know. I know. It makes for a lot of just waiting around, but right. that's cool. It's so cool. We got some uh we got some people on. That's fantastic. We want to do a little soft soft intro just to Yeah, I mean, we're still I, I want to wait till 10 to like formally kick it off formally kick it off i guess but i mean we're just kind of hanging out so right. um but yeah i don't know how was nice. uh, how was oh go ahead i was gonna say it's nice to be back we were here was it two weeks we took off right two yeah weeks, the holidays yeah hey nara uh nara from singapore i'm so glad you're on that's cool yeah we've been uh nara and i have been emailing back and forth he's uh he works he's working on like an electronics kit it sounded pretty cool um so I think we're actually going to meet just, up next week sometime to talk. Oh really? Just Dave, welcome. How you doing? Good to uh, good to have you here. Yeah. That's fantastic. It's so fun to have some people on chat with. Just kind of hanging out here. You know, Mike, I don't know how how like how often are you emailing people? Are, are these people all just in the academy, or do you have like are you just emailing people about their projects? Like that's just part of what you're doing during the day. I didn't. I guess uh, I it depends. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes mm -hmm. not. But yeah, you know, just trying to be friendly or whatever dave welcome luke welcome yeah I, I recognize a lot of people's names robert so cool it's people are here this is fun um again we're kicking off in just a couple minutes we figured we'd start early why not you know like just hanging out a little bit um wow i i you know i haven't thought too much about the timing but we have singapore canada uganda london quebec canada um germany and chris, chris. Welcome. Yeah, I know the uh, the timing is a little bit of a uh, that's one thing I have gotten a lot of emails about um, is like mm. we got to work on the time, you know, because I wonder it's, it's very EST ish, you know, which is yeah. where I'm at. So which you're the guy you're the guy doing the thing. That's I think that's fine. Well, I'm one I, of the guys, but I mean, I don't know. I, I wonder uh, where like what time would everyone prefer? Like what? I, I don't know if we could land on that. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you just got to go with something, you know what I mean? And yeah. so I just thought let's, mm -hmm. I have a little more energy in the morning. So it's like, Hey, right. Cliff. Welcome. Great to have you here. Fred. Welcome from Nebraska. Awesome. My uh, brother-in-law was, I think he, yeah, he was stationed in Nebraska for a while. Um, North Hulk Carolina, Nebraska. Cool. Man, I got my cup like right where the chat comments are. That's why I keep doing this to look at the comments. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Hey, it looks like, uh, 3 p.m. in the UK. Good for me. Hey, all right, cool. Time works good. Jamaica, sweet man. I wish I was in Jamaica right now. I'll tell you what, I'm in like uh, the Northeast. It's kind of chilly. Jamaica, but. that's so great. Sweet. Romania, Wyoming. This is awesome. How cool. Mm -hmm. India, fantastic. Well, I guess uh, it's like 10 o'clock. Um, kind of officially launch it now. My name uh, is Mike Chage. I'm the owner of Programming Electronics Academy. And I am joined with Josh Gilbert. He is our video producer. And uh, so the dynamic here a little bit is I'm a programming and electronics enthusiast. I've been doing this for quite a while. Um, like as a hobbyist, you know, that kind of thing. I just enjoy it a lot. Josh is not into programming and electronics so much, aside from the fact that he's probably seen and edited every single one of the videos that uh, the company's made. So um, he's, it's kind of gone through that lens, but he's, you know, kind of on the outside. So we're trying to bring him into the fold. Right. You know what I mean? We're trying to get him addicted to the, you know, <laughs> Hey, it's, <laughs> it's starting to work. I, it's funny. Cause a lot of my friends are into programming or into electronics and they're all makers. And I'm kind of the guy in our friend group. Like I play a lot of magic. And so when we're playing games together, it's always like, I'm talking about this work that I do. That's very in the world that they're into, but like, I don't, I mean, when we first had our conversation, Mike, when we started working together, I was like, I don't know any of these words. Like it's, so it's been cool yeah. to just like see the, see the community build. I'm yeah. really impressed with how many places people are joining in from. Like, yeah, no, this is fantastic. Netherlands, Wisconsin. Got Ontario. Welcome, Bill, Bill Tom. welcome, Tom. Misha, welcome. 
Netherlands. All right. Awesome. Yeah. John, welcome. One one thing. So like another thing, Mike, is this is a new show for us. This is like the fourth time we've done it. Um, we've definitely tried to make it like a show and entertaining, but we're kind of realizing this is also just a way to connect with <clears throat> the community. Like if you're a part of the YouTube channel or maybe a part of the Academy or you've heard about us, maybe you have the Arduino book um, for absolute beginners, but it's, we just want to spend time like with the audience and like, I, and I don't know a lot about this, right. We established that, but like, it's, it's fun just to, to meet the people even in a digital way. So this is maybe more of us just hanging out and less of like, how can we, you know, make this content? It's really just like fun to, to be with anyone on the channel. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know? Um, you know, and I was the way I was kind of thinking about it uh, years ago, I guess it wasn't that long ago. I was doing a, uh, I was going to a meetup, an electronics meetup. Um, and uh, it was just like, you'd show up and just talk about electronics and programming stuff. Like, Hey, I'm working on this project. I'm working on that project. And it was just, you know, we'd meet at a bar or somewhere like that, do it once a month or whatever. And it, it was just really fun. I always enjoyed it. I made like good contacts and, and always enjoyed sure. it. So I'm hoping we can have something like that, you know, like where we're just hanging out and talking about, you know, whatever. So are um, you, uh, do you, are you bringing like projects with you at all? Or is it all just like you're talking about ideas? No, I mean, yeah, people would bring projects. In fact, the first meetup we had, it was, a. Uh, it was fun because uh, I, you probably don't know who Chris Gamble is, but he mm -hmm. is uh, he does an electronics podcast that's been on for like ages. It's called um, uh, The Amp Hour. I don't know if anybody's oh. heard of The Amp Hour. It's like a really fun show. Anyway, uh, he used to, yeah he started the meetup. I started it like I was you know I started going to it when it started like way back when. And the first uh, so there was, you know, quite a few people who showed up and somebody brought this awesome project where they'd taken um, uh, like drill old drills that they had, you know, like just hand tool drills. And then they used those. They put it they used each of those um, drills as like a wheel motor for this okay. thing. And they had it radio controlled. And it was like this super powerful uh, thing. And he had a little uh, shovel on the front of it to like try to push snow and stuff. It was uh, anyway, he had it in his bar. He was driving around. It was hilarious. But that sounds uh, I mean, having not really worked on many projects myself, that sounds like an amazing way to just get excited about it. Like you're just seeing all these people bringing all these different projects. Did you show up with anything specific or just? No, kind of I can't to... remember. It's been a while. I guess it has been a while. So I don't remember bringing anything specific, but I always had something to talk about, you know? So, but yeah, I mean, Have you ever... I don't know. That's kind of what I'm like going after, but or that's what I think would be cool if this was, you know, like I said, this is live. It's like a totally different medium for me. Josh talked me into doing this. So like, <laughs> you know, I don't know, just hanging out, trying to have some fun. I, I just felt like, like there's the community forum in the Academy, but I just felt like it would be fun to engage with the people that like have you've worked together, you've seen projects with. It's just like fun to, I don't know, get a more familiar conversation going. Like, I mean, just thanks everyone for jumping on. David, we got Dave, Bill, Tom, Wadha from Iraq. Like that's yeah, Chris Dan. Sweet. That's so David great. from Colorado. Awesome. No, yeah, this is a lot of fun. So, I mean, we do somewhat have a bit of an agenda, um, you know, so like we uh, I do want to mention. So, like, if you have a question, feel free to ask it in the chat. We've got there's like multiple ways to ask questions, right? The chat, you can ask a question in the chat and probably if it's like a really easy question or some semi easy ish, like, you know, we can try to like address it or something like that. Or if you're in the chat and you see somebody ask the questions, maybe you can like help them answer it, you know, electronics or programming or whatever. But another way to do it is just to go to the programming electronics website forward slash question. And we've got a form on the website and you can submit a question and you can uh, even upload code if you want or pictures or whatever you want to like files. Um, and we will like try to talk about that on the next show or one of the upcoming shows. Um, and so, in fact, like on this show, we are answering a question from a previous episode. So we've done three of these, right, Josh? Three of these so yep. far. So we've gotten uh, several questions. And so on this show, we're going to try to like talk about one of those questions in it. But so, yeah, feel free to, uh, you know, ask. Welcome, Daniel. Great to have you here. Um, yeah. Christmas and New Year's. I had. I had a really good time, man. I had a good holiday. It was fun. I don't know about you, though. I can't remember who was talking about it, but, oh, I picked my daughter up from – I'm actually helping my daughter with this robotics class at school. And leaving the school, I saw a friend of ours, and she's like, hey, did you have a good holiday? We're like, yeah. But she's like, you know that time between Christmas and New Year's where everything's just kind of like yeah. – you know what I mean? Like you've already maybe had some time off from Christmas, and now mm -hmm. it's like 
I don't know. I, I'm so much a, I love schedule. And so I just kind of get like, all right, I love the holidays, but I'm kind of ready to get back to work, you know? Right. I don't know. Did, but, uh, how old's your daughter? Did you say she turns 14 today, man? This is her oh, birthday today. Right. No way. That's, so. that's super fun getting to incorporate your kids into that. I could see being, it, it's, it's like your job, you know, uh, maybe kids aren't into it. Maybe they are. Maybe it's really cool to see their dad, like working on stuff at home. Um, that's cool. Yeah. We got a couple of questions. I don't know if you are, if you want to address any of them. Oh yeah. No, I love, I love Katie's question. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, way to program or doing it with an iPad. This is like, this is a good question because this has been, this is like a long, this is questions been being asked for a long time. And I feel like I don't have a good answer to it. I'm curious if anybody else has had any luck. The only way, um, and, and here I think is the issue here, here I think is the, the issue. It's not that you couldn't, it's not that you couldn't write code for the Arduino on an iPad because they, uh, there is now an online editor, which is pretty cool. Uh, in fact, yeah, I mean, we could show, I don't know, we could probably show the online editor. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I want to, here, let me share my, let me pull up a tab real quick let me yeah here we go so you want to share my screen and i'll oh actually i'm already at the arduino reference all right so um all right so here i am i'm at the arduino website and i'm just going to go up to software and you know there's like a ton of different ways to program arduino you can do it with the software they provide or you can do it different ways but one of the ways that you can do it is with their online editor so if so here i'm just going to click code online see the thing is I, uh, I'm probably not going to be able to log in because I do like, um, I, I kind of go a little bit nuts with authentication. And so I'm going to, you know, it's going to like send me a text message to require to me to get in and I don't have my phone handy. So I'm probably, let me, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not gonna. So sure, anyway, <laughs> trust me that there is an online editor. <laughs> All right. It looks just like the desktop editor, but it just lives in Chrome. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So if you can have Google Chrome or I guess any web, you know, any web browser for that matter, Safari or whatever, if you can have that browser open on your iPad, you can get into an IDE and you can write Arduino code. Mm -hmm. So that's no problem. But this is, issue, oh, go it, ahead. Well, I was going to say what, what my question is, is like, is, is the question about uploading with the iPad and like, why would you, is it because it's like trans, uh, it's like, mo like, yeah, tra mobile or whatever. Like, why would you want to upload with an iPad versus a computer? Because isn't it easier just to type on a computer anyway? Well, right. But I think her question is, can you do it with, sh she's asking, can, uh, is, do you know a way to program Arduino with an iPad? So sure. in that, what you mentioned is kind of the crux of the issue. Okay. It's not so much, um, it's not so much programming. It's like, can you upload it to the board? Okay. You know what I'm saying? And that is I guess, like the problem that I have no idea how to solve. I'm not like, saying it isn't solvable somewhere, but I don't, from what I know, um, uh, from what I know, I don't think you can actually uh, upload code to the oh. board from the iPad. So that's kind of the issue. Check it out. This is okay. Yeah. Um, right. I know. My so students, I, yeah. All and, my students and, have iPads. What's interesting is that um, the, uh, the Chrome, so the reason, at least here's my theory. This is my, uh, uh, my hypothesis. The reason that Arduino made the online editor, one of the reasons at least, and again, this is Mike, this could be total BS, right? But I think they were trying to address the education um, industry because so many people had Chromebooks and the IDEs weren't, you know, like the Chromebooks are running whatever OS and, you know, uh, Chrome, I guess, right? Is that what the name of it is? And so, um, yeah. You couldn't use like, you know, the our, the typical Arduino ID. So they made it web based. And now all of a sudden you could use a Chromebook to okay. um, upload to your to your Arduino That's, board, which is pretty sweet. It, well, it's funny because Katie said that she's a teacher and so students with iPads. But that's funny because in my head, I'm like, everyone's just a hobbyist. They're just at home doing this, like just use your computer. But it's like, oh, of course, like how can we make Arduino accessible for like kids in school? That's like super. That's a really valid uh, question. Yeah. We access the code online editor, but we have trouble uploading the Arduino. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I wish there was a solution. I, there might be. I'm curious. I'm going to make it like a mental note. Maybe I'll look that up because it's not, you're definitely not the only person running into that issue. That's, that has been like, I've, I've seen that question for a long time. Uh, hmm. People curious about how to do that. So, um, 
there, yeah, no, that's cool. Um, there's some other questions, Mike, if you want to address them or we could just... Yeah, no, I, I somebody had talked about a sandbox for running Arduino code with some keyboard IO and see it work. Yeah, um, Curtis, yeah. Yeah, okay, so this, okay, this might, uh, this doesn't really quite address this answer, but I don't know. So there is an Arduino simulator called Tinkercad. Um, and I would show you Tinkercad, but I also have double authentic authentication set up with it. I need to like maybe turn that off. This is kind of silly, but it's made by a company called Autodesk. And Autodesk is like, you know, if you're familiar with CAD software, they make some really awesome CAD software. And Tinkercad is really pretty sweet. It looks like, so when you go to the webpage, you're like, oh no, this is, you know, just for kids or whatever. And I think, all right. Perhaps it's designed for kids, but they actually, and you'll notice they're showing in that video, they show like 3D modeling because Tinkercad, you can use it to 3D model, but what you can also do is simulate Arduino code in there. Um, yeah, there's, maybe, so, maybe we can find a clip. Oh yeah. Yeah, they've got people. Now, here's the thing. They show it with the block editor, but there's actually a, um, there's not just the block editor. There's also like an actual Arduino code editor and it's, uh, it's pretty nice. Um, yeah. so yeah, Arthur's mentioning that he, they use Tinkercad, um, in a high school course. So I, you know, you were asking about keyboard input output and I, so in Tinkercad, there is a place where you can use the serial monitor. And so you should be able to do some, but that might not, that really might not be what the question is that was asked. And I can't remember who asked that question, Josh, about the input, the IO, because um, Curtis, they, yeah. yeah, Curtis, you might be talking about like, if you're using say um, a Leonardo board an Arduino Leonardo, which asks, or which kind of works as, or can be a USB emulator, right? And so what happens when you plug your Arduino in, uh, when you plug in a uh, Leonardo in to your computer, when you, you know, connect it, um, your computer thinks that it's like a peripheral. It looks like it's some USB peripheral. Mm. And so then um, you can make it act like a, a uh, keyboard. Okay. Um, but me, I, so I'm not sure. I don't know if we're really helping your question or not there, but um, as far as the IO, but that's, I don't know. There's some thoughts there totally. uh, as far as the sandbox, but. Oh, yeah. I mean, accessibility, like getting people yeah. stuff getting... from everywhere. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I think uh, in. Oh, and if anybody's interested about Tinkercad, we do have a video if uh, on the YouTube channel um, that Rich made. Um, and uh, I think it's really good. It's uh, on Tinkercad, the Arduino yeah. simulator you've been looking for, I think, is the name of that. Um, uh, is the name of that one. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I don't know. It's pretty good. I can find that. Maybe. Yeah. Let's see. Nice. Adafruit Feather, uh, Raspberry Pi 2040 Scopio, eight channel NeoPixel driver. Does this allow each channel on each trip to? I really, I am not sure. That's a good question. I don't, I don't know about that. Um, sorry, Anthony. We, not much help there. Um, we talked about doing a NeoPixel video where it's just like me setting it up for the first time. So yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't understand that. That's yeah, that's interesting though. Um, so. Uh, but talking about, so talking about videos we're talking about making, uh, Josh and I were talking about the YouTube channel in general and kind of the direction, you know, where the company is trying to take it and like, you know, that kind of thing. And so we're trying to think about like, okay, well, what kind of videos are we going to make for the year? And obviously like, um, feedback from the community on like video ideas or, you know, what they're interested in is fantastic. So you can always like email us, you know, uh, if you're on our, uh, newsletter, feel free to just email us like, Hey, I got this great idea for content or leave it in comments on videos or just like in the chat, you can put it. Um, and, uh, I, it really, it's super useful for us as far as like, Hey, this is what, uh, um, mm -hmm. you know, just to kind of give us a direction, but yeah. So, um, I don't know. So we've been, it's been actually kind of fun kind of ideating some ideas for videos we want to make. Um, and we're going to be shooting for like two videos a month on YouTube is what we're doing. And then kind of like this community show and stuff, but I don't know. That's, that's yeah. kind of the thought. Well, yeah, it's interesting in, in working on YouTube is like, we don't know what people necessarily want. Like there's a lot of, like we want to make discoverable content for people who don't know about Arduino, who are maybe interested in learning about programming electronics. But there's also a lot of people here that I'm assuming have heard of our 
content before and maybe they're looking for more like mid-level or like higher level stuff more technical things so it's, it's always hard to know and please like feel free to give feedback um about that like even in, just in this chat or whatever we're also considering like do we want to keep doing a live show it really has been fun for me just like hanging out and getting to know the audience but like it kind of depends like i mean seeing almost 100 people feels nice to just like know that there's people hanging out and um people seem engaged so that, that's really cool but it's hard to know like do we want to keep doing a live show and yeah yeah this is something we're totally experimenting with so i don't know i'm having fun so far i guess uh, you too, you know. man. <laughs> I know. Yeah. hopefully it's helpful for people watching you know fun to just check out um yeah, yeah. hey ian mentioned uh Vizzy, Vizzuino. uh i can't i'm not saying that right Vizu Vizuino. um you gotta love the you know the duino eno endings on everything that's what's fun about that's kind of like one of those jargon terms when you start like getting into arduino yeah everybody is taking duino they take the ar off and then they just put something duino so you know and it's really funny <laughs> i kind of love it but like it makes for some interesting words Vizzy uino mm -hmm. uh, i think it's hilarious i'm guessing it's vizuino viz ooh, vizuino. vizuino oh maybe you're right vizuino um but uh, yeah, I feel like I've heard about Vizuino too. I haven't checked it out. Um, is it? Uh, I don't know. Is it? I'm not sure if it's paid or not paid or something like that. Um, Seems intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, so yeah, I don't know. Um, one, we're talking about content and stuff like that. Um, and uh, one of the things we're kicking around doing is. Um, is something totally different uh, content wise that we've ever done. So I, I love reading. I'm a huge reader. Josh, you're a reader, aren't you? I am. Okay. So I love reading and um, I, I don't usually read a lot of fiction. I read some fiction. I mostly read nonfiction, but when I read a good fiction book, I'm like, Oh, this is great. Mm -hmm. So uh, last year um, I reached out and I hired, I actually hired two authors to write a book, two different books about uh, fiction books and this is where it's a little weird i i hired two people to write fiction books about some arduino thing right well and so and the idea the reason i hired two is was like well i want i want to just see like you know where is it going you know like where is each yeah. one taking it and then i was just gonna like you know like hey i really like what you're doing but i think uh i think i'd you know rather go this way mm -hmm. and um uh People, I love that. I read tons of data sheets. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely nonfiction. I don't know. There might be some fiction in some data sheets. <laughs> that's that's um, good. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. So anyway, so we hired this uh, we hired this author, and one of the authors. So we ended up having both of the guys write books because they were both really fun and entertaining. Yeah. One ended up being more what I had in mind, which is good, and I think we're going to be publishing that soon. But the other one was like this really exciting fiction story or not. I mean, I don't know. It really yeah. interesting. Well, it's, fiction it's, a, story. it's, it's like, like a mystery. dystopian yeah. mystery novel, right? Yeah. I like, guess it is, see, it's funny. You call it dystopian. I wouldn't call it dystopian, but anyway, I mean, so then we're like, Hey, well, if we get this book made, maybe we could do something with it on YouTube. So then we're like, well, Hey, let's hire an artist. Like, let's just get a couple pictures made and like, maybe we'll make it like a, a movie or an something not like a movie but yeah like you know like yeah, so the words story, are playing yeah. it's telling a story it's like a uh audiobook right yeah but that you would watch on youtube something like interactive right so mm -hmm. so then we like looked at some artists and then one guy was like way over the top yeah uh welcome dan he was like way over the top in his artistry and like just brought a bunch to the table was super excited about the project so He's like right now doing all types of artwork, kind of like a graphic novel, I guess, is what it would yeah. end up being, um, which I'm like, that's pretty cool. So I don't know when that's going to go live. Uh, maybe right. this summer we'll get it around. It's it's totally different, but. Right. Well, I and I think you're bringing that up because it's like interesting to see how the audience will like how the community will respond to something like that because it's like there's really not much technical stuff in there like really not at all but it's in no it's like straight up fiction book about like arduino project it's pretty weird but right but it's um, fun like i'm excited to see we, we talked about doing a live show with the author having mark on oh yeah just, just kind of like talking about the story as a whole it's a really well done story like it's, it's yeah fun. i and agree I, not understanding the world reading it i was like oh this is like it's intriguing to me it's like getting my interest 
Yeah, totally. Um, but uh, so, mm-hmm. oh, that's cool, Dan. You use uh, um, for amateur radio projects using Arduino. That's really cool. I'd like to see some radio designs. That's awesome. No, I appreciate that. I know we've got a lot of ham folks. Um, are, when I say the term uh, ham, do you know what that means, Josh? No, is that an All right, yeah. So ham is like a, a term for uh, amateur radio operators. Okay. Actually, okay. So actually, ham is ham an acronym? Can somebody school me on this? I should probably know this. Um, I should know this, but I don't. But uh, yeah, it's um, so like the ham, ham, there's hams and they are uh, radio operators. And somebody should smack me down in the comments because I am not going to do this justice because <laughs> I don't have my radio operator's license. I really would like to get one because uh, mm-hmm. I find it fascinating. But um, it's kind of its own. It's it's really its own world. Um, and if somebody wants to look into it more, I think AARL, right? A- uh, American Amateur Radio League, maybe is the term. Anyway, it's people um, doing... Uh, amateur radio, right? So they're communicating via radio. A lot of people build their own radios to communicate and um, they, they, um, they do it on frequencies that are like made available. Like there's certain spectrums of the frequency that you can use like for uh, um, different stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, yeah, it's this huge organization of people, but what's awesome is one one niche they fill is they help emergency responders when like um, crud hits the fan kind of thing, you know, like, so let's say you have a power outage or some type of emergency situation. They're able to set up like these different nodes of communication to like help people talk and like kind of reset up infrastructure. It's like a really actually a very important kind of uh, wow uh, thing. When I was working at the airport, I used to work at an airport um, and they like every three years or two years, airports have to do like these emergency plans you know like hey something bad happens blah 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 this anyway part and and you have to you involve all these different organizations in the response Mm -hmm. and one of those organizations we that was actually involved was the local ham club um because they helped set up uh some radio stuff so it was it was pretty cool um but anyway all right went on a wait so you're mike you're saying that you were a pilot is that part of your story? Yeah, I was a pilot. Yep. In the military, I was a pilot. I flew helicopters. And as part of that job, I was, we were, uh, I was at a airport, uh, just like a civilian airport working okay. for the federal government. But You know, yeah. you've mentioned that and I can't believe I've never really asked about it, but you're like, when you say pilot, you're the one doing like you're the guy doing the thing are you always is there a co-pilot are you always with someone else doing yeah that? yes yeah the okay. aircraft i was flying yeah i was always, always okay yeah dude we should we should just do like a whole show about that sometime i'm just i could uh, ask you questions maybe. about that for a while <laughs> it's, it's been a while now that's cool um, so uh let's see there was a question there about um ooh circuit python by adafruit okay no that's a good that's a good content idea um and then uh daniel asked a question about other than c plus plus would Python be acceptable to code with? Um, and that's a good question. Yeah, there there are some languages coming online where you can use Python to program microcontrollers. Namely, there's CircuitPython and then there's MicroPython. Um, and I won't, I, I don't, oh, Fred, thank you. Amateur Radio Relay League. I bet all the hams out there listening to me I, I know I just jumped topics there, Josh. I'm sorry. Somebody left the comment down at the no, bottom. You're fine. Uh, people, are, right? people are answering and questions. Like, all yeah. I can think about, there is probably like all these uh, ham operators out there like pulling their hair out as I was talking about ham. I apologize. I didn't do it uh, justice. But it's okay. um, <laughs> anyway, so back to the Python thing. Uh, um, it's like, uh, yeah, you can, um, there, there's, there's different ways to do it now for sure using Python. And I think Python's a great language. I think you'll find a lot of people doing C, C++, Arduino. Uh, like that's the language you'll get seen being used mostly uh, mm-hmm. on these things. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think Python's doable. But they asked for other languages. I think the actual question was something other than Python. Um, I don't know. Circuit, let's see. This, uh, this question? Yeah. Other than C++, would Python be except? Yeah. Okay. So um yeah and i mean that's kind of a general uh you know a pretty general question daniel but i find that um when you start getting into like programming you never just stick with one you know you end up like picking up a couple languages and um it seems like a lot of programmers i know do that uh, i you know I, I definitely program with python and stuff like that hmm. um but uh 
Cool. Um, hey, so I wanted to talk about uh, I wanted to talk about something that came up in the uh, academy forum that uh, was like really hit me near and dear to my heart. And uh, that was somebody was like working on one of the challenges. Like, you know, like if you're working through some training, right? We got training on our website. People are working through the training and you have some type of assignment at the end or some type of challenge, right? We call them challenges. And uh, he was working on the challenge and he got really stuck. And I don't know, like if, and I was going to ask you this, Josh, are you currently learning anything like completely new to you? Like, just totally new um, like right now. Like you're in the process of learning something like you just don't know. Totally. I'm yeah. I, one of my friends visited recently and he's in a phenomenology psychotherapy course. Uh, so in school, like he's going to become a psychoanalyst. And so he got me like eight books. And so I've been, that's like a totally new concept. I, it's like philosophy mixed with psychology. It's totally new. And I don't know anything about it, but I'm learning about it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cause like there's this place when you first start learning something, um, that you just feel completely lost in yeah. the sauce. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like you feel so completely insufficient and you, feel, I don't know. And maybe not everybody gets this. I get it hardcore. Mm -hmm. So when I read the comment, I was like, Oh man, I, I, I know that feeling. Um, because you can be uh, an extremely intelligent person, a, a very capable person, and it's not like you have to be super smart to program in the first place. You know, it's not it's not so much intelligence, but like you can be a capable person, able to do all types of stuff, right? And you might be an expert in your field, whatever field. But when you like jump ship and you try learning something totally different, mm -hmm. like that space is so it's like. It's yeah. so easy at that point to throw in the towel and be like, okay, like this is so uncomfortable. This, right. this like process is so uncomfortable. Like I'm losing my mind yeah. and like just all those thoughts of like, okay, like I should know how to do this. Mm -hmm. um, why can't I do this? It seems like everybody else is doing it. Like um, what's wrong with my brain, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like all of that mental talk that like right. meta game that just tears you apart. Like, and I don't know, maybe for me, um, that it's just like me, you know what I mean? Like, dude, yeah. I mean, actually what comes to mind is when I first started working with you, you had me learn Camtasia, which is the software we use to edit our videos. And that, that was the experience. I remember seeing it and my initial thought, it was all like self-focused. I'm like, I'm not smart enough to do this or I can't handle this, but it's really, it's really just an entirely unfamiliar environment. And you just have to you just have to believe that you can slowly start to learn it. And, you know, a couple of years later, it's like, I, it's super familiar to me now. Oh, yeah. You're like but, a pro at it now, man. Like, oh, you're, thanks. You're <laughs> oh, seriously. No, uh, yeah, man. It's like, and so like, just, and I don't know, maybe it's silly to talk about it, but like, I, I have to give myself, I do self-talk. Yeah. I, Cause like, I, one thing I've been trying to do, I've been trying to do for like a long time is like, I just like to. I really enjoy learning. Right. Mm -hmm. And I want to be in a place where I'm, I'm trying new things regularly, like yeah. cognitively challenging things on a regular basis. I think partly because like, I don't know if this is true or not, but I want to say, I want to say that there might be some, uh, mental protection if you do cognitive tat new cognitive tasks on a regular basis, you know, like they say like, Oh, Hey, the brain's a muscle. If you use it, it won't, you know? So I don't know if, if anything's actually, yeah. I don't know if there's but, any way to say like, yes, for sure. Um, mental training of this type will protect against like dementia or Alzheimer's or something. Like, I don't know if that's really true. It's nice to think it is right. Yeah. Yep. I'm not saying it isn't nice to think it is, but mm -hmm. um, anyway, so that's one reason I do it. You know what I mean? Is just like, all right, yeah. Yeah, I just want my brain to be sharp as long as I can possibly have it sharp. Have but, you, sorry. Uh, but the other thing is, uh, the other thing is like, I want to know exactly what that feeling is like, mm -hmm. um, because like the people we're trying to serve are like, a lot of them are probably having that same feeling. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I don't know, but I was, I was just going to bring up, there's that book on neuroplasticity about like the, the 10,000 hours and like what's happening neurologically when you really learn something for a long time and your brain is like literally re reworked, rewired. Do you know the book I'm talking about? It's like a really popular 
neuroplasticity book talking about like the white and the gray brain cells yeah i might i don't know okay. uh i, try to you, find it, I, I, I read I some of that it. i read some of that popular science books okay yeah i can't i can't find it um, Ten thousand hours i know ten thousand hours is a thing but that's right uh, i don't think that's from a neuroplasticity angle i think that's more of like a they say like hey if you're going to become an expert you need like ten thousand hours i think is the number right i think yeah. this guy the book that i a friend was telling me about it he uses um neuroscience to back up why 10,000 hours, how that, how your brain is like over that much time, really having like a robust understanding of something like, I, I don't know. It, yeah. Yeah. No. I, and that's the thing. Like, I feel like, uh, I feel like for sure, um, getting your brain to, like, I don't know. I, I, there's definitely, there's gotta be, there's gotta be something behind it. I would imagine. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I, I, David, I'm right there with you, man. Lifelong learning. I'm just, I, I personally just enjoy it. I think that's mm -hmm. why I'm into it. But so right now, um, I'm learning some Python stuff, and mm -hmm. I responded to the person in the forum. You know, I said, like, uh, I totally, I like, I just, I can relate to it. You know, because I was like, just that morning, I was trying to graph something with Python. Like, I'm talking the simplest graph, like. I have an X and a Y and I just need to make a little line graph. Like that's easy. Like it's on the start page. It's, you know, like the start here, like mm -hmm. if you don't know anything, you should be able to do this. And here I am. And I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't graph it. I'm like, I feel like <laughs> such an idiot. Uh, and it took a while, but I, I finally, like finally worked through it. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't actually that day because it, What's funny is like I figured it out. I I had figured it out a couple of days ago, and then like I forgot how to do it, and then I had to refigure it out. I was like, man, am I just dumb or what? But well, I think yeah. I just think that's what it's like. Like you know, like our brains. Maybe some people can. I'm sure some people are more quickly pick stuff up. But yeah, I don't know. For me at least, it's it's hard to get stuff in my in my noggin. Yeah, I mean, I I really feel like it's a mindset thing. There's that growth versus fixed mindset thing, and just like isn't just like telling yourself that you can learn. I mean, that's kind of even part of the company's, you know, motivation is like people can learn stuff like this is not too much to handle. So I feel like we, in our, in our videos, in our content, we're trying to say like, yeah, you can learn stuff. I even have this great book right here, which is really good for learning. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you I was going to do that. Louis yeah, Law, you, you just need go more check copy. out this book by yours truly or him. <laughs> um, Louis Law was like, uh, you just need more coffee. Yeah. I, I think you're right, man. I didn't have enough coffee. Actually, I'm my wife was telling me the other day, Mike, I think you're drinking, you're drinking too much coffee. Really? Um, Should we do a, a coffee cheers? Just everyone yeah. out there, a little coffee yeah. sip. But yeah, coffee cheer. I think that's partially right, man. I, well, you were just saying the other day how good coffee is for you, but yeah, I was listening to a podcast on the the ben the positive benefits of it. I was like, wow, this is this seems like way better for our brain Sweet. and our body. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, man, I don't know. We've been talking for like almost 40 minutes. This is kind of like what we're thinking, you know, just hanging out and talking about body, like talking about electronics and stuff. So I, this totally. is kind of like the direction we were trying to go. So yeah, I don't know. Um, if, uh, if, you know, I'm curious what you think, like, feel free to reach out, please mm -hmm. do, uh, mention something on the, in the questions. If you could just, uh, uh, if yeah. you could throw that link up again, um, just programming electronics.com forward slash questions. And, um, ask a question there and we can uh, talk about it in the show, chat about it a little bit. And I just want to say thanks so much for everybody showing up. Like this was totally awesome. If you want to learn more about programming electronics, you can just Google programming electronics.com and uh, we'll come up and uh, you know, that's uh, we're just all about kind of learning this thing. So yeah, great. Hey, it's been awesome. And uh, take it easy, everybody. Awesome. Thanks for joining everyone. Yep. Thanks for joining. This was fun. See you.